Hello, dear friends. Today, we continue to get acquainted with the German soldier's diary. Rate this video and leave your opinion in the comments. And we begin. August 6, 1941. All day long, we are at our position. Everything is quiet. The orders are being given out. We burn the whole village. It burns right in front of us. At night, we are on full combat readiness. The order is to move away from the enemy according to the signal, flame. The company must be gathered in one kilometer to the rear. August 7th. The conditioned signal was at 035. The company's gathering was over at 2 o'clock. We discreetly broke away from the enemy. At 2.30, the battalion retreated five kilometers to the west. We take a new line of defense. We're building fortifications. We're positioned right behind the third company. Thunderstorm and rain. Past five kilometers. August 8th. The construction of fortifications is in progress. The reconnaissance patrol and combat guard are put out. It is raining. We are being attacked by Russian artillery. There is no supplies. The roads are poor. August 9th. The night was calm. It rained. As a welcome in the morning, the Russian artillery is firing. By midday, our heavy guns begin to answer the fire. We slaughtered a pig for ourselves. August 10th. The night was accidentless. We received midday hello from the Russians. At 1910, there was a meeting of platoon commanders. For showing bravery in front of the enemy, I was promoted to Feldwebel. I am very happy. August 11th. The alarm at 1.50. The platoon is ready for battle. The 7th Company is under heavy machine gun and rifle fire. The enemy with forces of about a company arrives by trucks. At 5.30 we open fire in the former direction. Throughout the day the Russians are heavily bombarding us with artillery. It rains. We built our first dugouts. The positions and dugouts are more and more improved every day. August 12th. During the night there was a heavy firing from the left. It's a thick fog. We are getting a morning salutation from the Russian artillery. The enemy is attacking our advanced units. The advanced outposts of the guard of the 7th and 8th companies and the forward artillery observer are on the retreat. Three soldiers from the 7th company, one from the 8th company, and one artilleryman are killed. Two soldiers from the 7th company and one from the 8th company are wounded. August 13th. There was an artillery bombardment during the night. We are in full combat readiness. Everyone is ready for the battle. All the morning, the Russians are shelling us with artillery. For the rest, everything is quiet. At midday, there's an alert. The night is quiet. August 14th. Everything is all quiet. The 3rd Battalion is in a heavy firefight. The 1st Battalion is positioned in the rear as a reserve at our disposal. The Russian artillery keeps firing all day. The 7th Company's positions are attacked by the enemy at 2300. August 15th. The night was calm. From time to time, our artillery was firing hard at the Russian positions. The Russian behavior was calm. Only from time to time, they sent us greetings. Non-commissioned officer Freeze and his five men went back to the platoon. August 16th. All is quiet. The Russian artillery fires only sporadically. August 17th. It is still all quiet. It is Sunday, after all. Reconnaissance scout found about 20 Russians in the woods. August 18th. Everything is quiet. The Russians are doing a decent job of ironing us out. It's a reconnaissance patrol. The rain drops. August 19th. All is quiet in our area. To our right and left, there are some easy messes all night. We are sending out reconnaissance patrols. The Russian artillery is barely hearable. August 20th. The night was calm. There was no shooting until midday. Such an impression as if peace had come. We are on reconnaissance. In the night, the 89th Infantry Regiment was caught in a pretty bad mess. August 21st. The 89th Regiment is still in a shooting skirmish. The 9th Army is on the advance at Veliki Aluki. The 12th Infantry Division has laid 32,000 mines along the offensive line. The rest of the rest is calm. At 2100, the 7th Company's positions are under machine gun fire. The weather is awful. It's a storm and rain. The offensive at Veliki Aluki is delayed due to the weather. August 22nd. 
All the morning there was severe artillery shelling of Veliki Aluki. The Russians answered twice with intense artillery attacks. Elsewhere on our section of the front is all quiet. The company is replenished. One non-commissioned officer and eleven soldiers. August 23rd. There is nothing noteworthy. The construction of fortifications is in progress. There is some enemy shelling. August 24th. At 9.30, there were about 50 bursts of enemy artillery fire. Between 10 and 11.30, we practiced machine gun firing with the arrived replenishment. We conduct the reconnaissance. August 25th. The fortifications are being constructed. We are sending reconnaissance units. The 7th Company also sends a reconnaissance patrol. The time of departure is 12. There were 5 killed and 12 wounded. August 26th. The positions are being organized. The reconnaissance is in progress. Non-commissioned officer Fuchs is awarded the Iron Cross, first class, and Obergefreiter Johansson and Gefreiter Moller are awarded the Iron Cross, second class. August 27th. The meeting is called at the commanding officer's office. Oberlieutenant Stiglitz, the situation at the front is being discussed. The construction of fortifications and reconnaissance is in progress. The military tribunal will consider the Fishline and Heisa cases today. August 28th. The commander returned. Fuchs faced a court-martial. Fishline, for his cowardice in the face of the enemy in violation of guard duty, was sentenced to five years hard labor prison and two years disfranchisement. He is demoted and declared unfit for military service. Heisa received a year and a half of suspended sentence with an opportunity to make up for it at the front. August 29th. It rained all night. We conduct reconnaissance, build fortifications. August 30th. According to the order of August 28th, 1941, the soldiers of the company were awarded with infantry assault badges. We are on reconnaissance. The alert is on. We retreat, and then we move to the offensive. At 1300, the order is to get ready to march. At 1500, we march through Pogost Volok. We march with our weapons at the ready. The 7th Company advances. At night, we put up a combat guard in the woods. We've covered 12 kilometers. The positional war is over. We have left the positions well known to us for four weeks of standing and pursue the enemy. August 31st. Since the early morning, we keep on advancing. The rain never stops pouring. We have located the Russians. I lead my platoon on the offensive for the first time. We outflank the Russians from the rear, knock them out of their positions and wipe them out. We attack them under the pouring rain. There are no losses in our company. We hold the taken positions despite severe artillery and machine gun fire from the flank and from the front. In front of us, white signal flares fly up. It has to be our units. We respond. It is the 89th Infantry Regiment. The Russians are totally wiped out. We get a wave of the hand. The Russians have laid mines. One mine blows up among the guys from the 89th. A soldier from the 6th Company of the 89th Infantry Regiment is dead. The rest of the day and all through the night, my platoon is in combat guarding and keeping positions. The 89th Regiment's supply convoy is seriously overextended. It is simply impossible for them to get through. The roads are no longer available. September 1st. It is two years since the war was started. It is exactly two years today since the beginning of the Polish campaign. It was similar weather that night, also raining cats and dogs. At 8 o'clock, I was replaced by the 2nd Platoon. At 1300, we go on the march. The roads are horrible. We continue our march to the northwest. The whole place is covered with forests. The march is 14 kilometers. September 2nd. The direction is the same, and the weather, unchanged. The wagons are unable to pass. 14 kilometers covered. September 3rd. We continue the march. The roads are poor. 8 kilometers covered. September 4th. The direction is the same. The Russians abandon and leave us anything and everything. It's raining. 12 kilometers covered. September 5th. The Russians run away. The rain keeps pouring. There is a forest. The roads are poor. We have covered 14 kilometers. According to the distances we have passed, we can approximately determine what we were able to do in 10 hours, not more than 15 kilometers. September 6th. We march with guns at the ready. The Russians are fleeing. The direction is northwest. We passed 18 kilometers. It was raining. 
September 7th. The Russians are still in retreat. We move forward with guns at the ready. The weather is apparently brightening up. It rains only sporadically. The direction is unchanged. We pass 22 kilometers. September 8th. We leave at 1300. The weather and roads are nice. We covered 12 kilometers. September 9th. At 6.30, we receive an order, a day of rest. We bathe and get our weapons and uniforms in order. We have a haircut. September 10th. There is an alert. At 12.30, we march in a westerly direction. We take the defense. We build defensive fortifications. There is a mutual artillery exchange of artillery fire. 18 kilometers past. September 11th. The construction of fortifications is being carried out by us. Reconnaissance patrols are in progress. September 12th. At 4 o'clock, we leave our defensive positions and move forward. September 13th. The offensive at the village of Molvatizzi. Gefreiter Strauch is wounded. This evening, the 5th Company executes a special mission. The Russian artillery and anti-aircraft guns fire at us with direct aiming. It's getting dark. September 14th. Since early morning, we are on a reconnaissance patrol. Our company captures as trophies about 300 trucks, automobiles, guns, and an uncountable number of small arms. What a deal that was. Since 2 o'clock, we load up. We move forward at 4 o'clock. The offensive order has been changed. From 12 o'clock, we move in strike groups from the 6th and 7th companies. We passed 25 kilometers. September 15th. Our reconnaissance patrols take the captives in huge numbers. There are also some women in military uniforms. September 16th. The march at 1400. The kettle is closed. The direction is the highway Molvatizzi de Miansk. In Belly, we sat down for a night's accommodation. Our hut is burning. A hut where the second platoon accommodated during the night was completely burned down. We have passed 15 kilometers. That is all for now. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and support the channel with subscription. Bye everyone, see you again.